Drop a like and do share. Leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos. Hi everyone, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Eripedia World. The previous lecture we saw about creep which was a time dependent process at high temperature. Today we will study about fracture which is one of the most fundamental kind of failure mechanism. Fracture is basically separation of a body into two or more parts as a result of a load. Right, a static load because dynamic load is concerned with uh, fatigue. Uh, we are mentioning static load and at low temperature because high temperature study uh, is related to creep. So what is happening is that in fracture you apply a load and as a result of the load the body separates into two or more parts. It breaks down into two or more parts. It fails. Now the static load or the load which is applied on the body can be of several kinds. It can be tensile in nature. It can be compressive stress. It can be torsional and it can be shear. So tensile is basically you try to pull the sample. Compressive is when you try to squeeze the sample. Torsional is when you try to rotate the sample, turn the sample. And shear is when you apply forces like this, parallel to the surfaces. Okay? So these are the type of forces or type of scenarios of stress that can exist and all of them can affect fracture. All of them can lead to fracture. Now fracture, modes of fracture are two. One is ductile fracture, the second is known as brittle fracture. We will see in details what each of them is. But uh, just to give you an idea, ductile fracture has plastic deformation associated with it. Brittle fracture has no or very less plastic deformation. Fine. Now how does a fracture take place? Similar to fatigue where you had to have a crack and that crack basically propagates resulting in fatigue failure. Fracture also needs to have a crack initiation or crack formation and crack propagation. So crack initiates that propagates leading to failure. Crack propagation, the method by which crack propagates basically decides if a fracture is ductile or brittle. Right. Suppose we have a body and somehow a crack is formed on the body. This crack needs to travel from this end throughout the body. It should traverse throughout the body for the fracture to be effective like the material to collapse into two pieces. Isn't it? Now how does this crack propagate through the body? That will define whether the fracture type mode is ductile or the fracture mode is brittle fracture. What will happen in ductile fracture is that ductile fracture has extensive plastic deformation. Okay, so let's draw a bigger diagram. So if we have a fracture notch like this, during propagation of crack, what will happen? The front of crack, the area just before the crack, just in front of the crack, will have extensive plastic deformation. Okay, so that will take up a lot of energy for the material just in front of the crack to plastically deform. There will be strain over there, right? And the advancing crack as a result will be slowed down due to extensive plastic deformation. 
because obviously a lot of energy is going into that plastic deformation of the front region so crack cannot just pass through that region it requires time for the energy to plastically deform the region okay and also the amount of energy required for a ductile fracture will be more right because a lot of plastic deformation needs to take place for the crack to keep on propagating therefore ductile fracture is able to absorb a lot more energy than a brittle fracture when uh, because brittle fracture has no or minimum plastic deformation when there is no plastic deformation only elastic deformation then amount of energy absorbed will be much less thereby the crack propagation will be much more rapid okay and this rapid crack propagation in the case of brittle fracture is known as unstable crack propagation because there is nothing to stop the crack right there is no restoring force to slow down the crack propagating it will just initiate and within almost no time the crack pro propagates through the material causing fracture almost instantaneous fracture in the case of brittle material right so that is the basic difference between ductile fracture and brittle fracture plastic deformation that is the keyword now why is the ductile fracture preferred of ductile fracture is the kind of fracture which engineers prefer for a material to have why is it so because it is not spontaneous it is non spontaneous thereby there is more time for preventive maintenance there is scope to identify that the material is going to fracture beforehand because the fracture is going to take a lot of time to actually happen whereas in brittle fracture the fracture being spontaneous and immediate it uh, can be catastrophic therefore ductile is thought or kind of preferred fracture it is a evil but it is the preferred evil secondly ductile fracture as i said requires much more energy than brittle fracture so it can last a lot longer much harsher conditions than brittle material also undergoing brittle fracture that's why ductile fracture is the preferred mode of fracture for engineers now let us see the mechanism of ductile fracture exactly how is the ductile fracture happening what is happening is that uh, you apply the load initially the initial uh, loading will go into creating neck the neck formation will take place as shown in stage 1 and uh, beyond that what will happen will start getting small microvoids at the central region maybe or at the edges also mostly at the central region in the region where the neck has formed these will be microvoids which can be observed under a microscope third stage is coalescence of those microvoids the microvoids comes together and becomes sufficiently large and then it becomes a proper crack right and once it reaches a certain length a sufficient length then basically shearing will happen after that shear forces will take over and then something like this and shear forces are maximum at 45 degree this is tensile force shear forces are maximum Uh, at 45 degree to tensile forces therefore the last stage of crack propagation the last steps will see a 45 degree angle and this will be the fibrous region the central region will be fibrous crack scenario and over here will be the shear crack scenario so this is the overall ductile fracture mechanism in the brittle fracture mechanism Next, next page. I will show you uh, two figures: one for ductile and one for brittle. Let's see. Okay, so this is a ductile fracture. You can see 
that this region is the fibrous region and this region is the shear region it's almost at 45 degree this is the other end so this is 45 degree here 45 degree and this is the fibrous region this is my ductile fracture whereas in brittle fracture what you will see is brittle fracture what you will observe is that the surface the crack surface the surface has cracked almost perpendicular to the loading so if the loading was like this the resultant material which we obtain after cracking will be like this it's almost perpendicular to the load right so, the crack propagation is perpendicular to the direction of the stress also in brittle fracture what happens is actually there is successive breaking of bonds so basically bonds will start to break rupture and those rupturing bonds keep on breaking 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 and the whole fracture occurs and this is kind of transgranular through grains okay alternatively what can happen is that crack pro propagation can also occur along the grain boundaries in that case the crack will not propagate through the grains rather it will propagate along the grain boundaries and then that type of brittle fracture will be known as intergranular fracture transgranular is through the grains intergranular is between the grain or along the grain boundaries okay so uh, we have seen the two modes of fracture that is uh, ductile fracture and the brittle fracture here a lot of plastic deformation is taking place here plastic deformation is almost non-existent now this is something I, which I have discussed in the first very first lecture when I was introduced you to the sinking of Titanic if you remember I told you something about ductile to brittle transition what happens is the fracture mode uh, changes from ductile fracture mode which is the preferred mode to brittle fracture mode on lowering the temperature there is a transition temperature below which the mode of fracture is brittle above which the mode of fracture is ductile how do we find uh, what is the temperature what we do is basically we create identical samples many identical samples and we break them by impact I have not discussed about the different impact test but uh, then there is something known as Charpie impact test there is Izod impact test those tests can be used to determine how much impact energy is absorbed by a material to fracture okay by using those tests what is done is several n number of samples let's say five samples are are uh, fractured using the impact testing at five different temperatures one two three four five and the energy is noted the amount of energy required for fracturing each of the sample is noted and it comes out something like this let's say there are six samples okay uh, let's say we have six samples so suppose it comes like this using this data this graph is generated which is the graph between energy absorbed on impact against the temperature and we'll see that for certain materials there will be a sudden dip in the amount of energy required to fracture it somewhere over here the amount of energy required is very very high and then suddenly there is a dip and the amount of energy required for fracture reduces to quite low values that determines the transition temperature that is the ductile to brittle transition temperature 
but all materials will not have a ductile to brittle transition temperature. BCC and HCP materials shows ductile to brittle transition temperature. FCC materials normally remain ductile even at very low temperature. Okay? And uh, what is observed is that ceramic materials has quite high ductile to brittle transition temperature which is around 1000 degrees Celsius or even more than that. That is why ceramics normally have brittle failure, right? That's why a ceramic bowl, if it falls, it just breaks. And the break surface, if you observe, is kind of shiny, perpendicular to the impact region. Whereas BCC, that was the case of steel that was used for the titanic, iron, component the steel was uh, of BCC type so the ductile to brittle transition temperature for that steel due to the presence of sulfur was nearly 0 degree Celsius and since the water was cooler than that right therefore it was below the ductile to brittle transition temperature the impact happened all the testings were done for the ductile material impact happened at the brittle zone and fracture happened okay so this gives you an uh, interesting idea that there can be transition between ductile and brittle uh, failure mechanism for fracturing. So the idea is to know your region temperature of operation. If the temperature is very low, you will have brittle failure. If the temperature is very high, you will have creep taking over. So you need to know what temperature of operation you need to have and these things are quite pivotal at for determining what material needs to be used what are the dimensions of the materials to be used and is it is a given material appropriate for a particular application okay with this uh, the discussion on the different mechanical properties comes to a closure i will remind you again this is not an extensive lecture since this is an introduction to material science and engineering course I have given you glimpses of the different type of mechanical properties each of them independently can constitute a course in themselves okay so with this I will conclude today's lecture have a great day goodbye next day we'll start something new